Okay, this is the seventh video in probability functions uh, it's to do with hypothesis testing with the binomial distribution. I'm assuming that you've seen the normal distribution hypothesis testing video because the same mechanisms, the same process uh, are applied to testing with the binomial. Uh, there are just a couple of differences, um, uh, main differences that we need to, to think about when we're doing this because it's a discrete probability function. Um, one of the things is that there actually might not be a critical region. Um, if uh, if we can't say, say basically down at this 0%, if the probability, well, not on this curve, but in other situations, if, the, if this probability of zero actually falls above our significance level, then um, even a test statistic of zero is not going to fall into the critical region. So uh, that's just uh, something that we may find depending on the uh, on the numbers. And the other thing is that uh, the values are unlikely to be exactly one of the you know the round figures that we go for. So if we choose a, you know a, a five percent um, so one tail test, then it might well be that, uh, well, we can see from this example here that, uh, you know, if our critical region is um, is not one, two, then that's going to be more than 5%. If we choose not one, it's going to be less than 5%. I can just get that idea there. Um, <clears throat> so it won't come exactly. So what we have to do really is normally we have to choose the, the you know, the closest, uh, and it actually is going to change the significance level of the test. So our actual significance level is different to the one that we might set out to, to, to establish. Uh, let's have a look at this example, and hopefully it will start to become a bit clearer. It is known from past records that one in five bowls produced in a pottery of minor defects to monitor production, a random sample of 25 bowls was taken and the number of such bowls with defects recorded. So using a 5% level of significance, we would like find critical regions for a two-tail test of the hypothesis that one in about five bowls have defects. So we're trying to establish whether that's the case or whether it's not one in five. Okay. Um, the probability of rejecting in either tail should be as close to 2.5 as possible. So this is the this is the point. And state the actual significance level of the test. Okay, that's enough to be going on with. So, um, so the random variable is the number of de defect bowls in a batch of 25, our sample size. So um, that is binomially distributed with a mean with a an n of 25 and a p of 0.2. I mean, I've I've kind of quickly gone into that. I mean, you you when you're doing a, an exam question, you you have you you'll have to think a little bit carefully. Uh, you typically have only got two to think about. You know, it's normal and binomial. <laughs> um, just as a general thing, if 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 you're told a, um, a variance or a standard deviation, then it probably leads you to uh, towards uh, normal as long as it's a continuous uh, random variable. Otherwise, uh, as in this one, it's sort of discrete numbers, isn't it? There's no um, standard deviation or variance given. Although if it's binomial, then there is a there is a standard deviation, isn't there, or a variance of, of uh, NP times 1 minus P. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so this is binomial. Um, and our null hypothesis is that the proportion of bowls is 0.2. And the alternative is that it's not 0.2. So we're doing a two-tail test at 5%. Now, I've um, I've drawn this just to help to illustrate uh, stuff, or I'm not actually drawn it by hand. I've been to this uh, Casio uh, web page and just put two numbers in, and it draws this nice little, little graph for you. Uh, notice here this is skewed to the left because, um, the, um, because uh, the P is... Is uh, is is uh, is smaller than 0.5. Um, okay. Um, what you can do, uh, of course, is go to your calculator and calculate um, um, a set of values from which you can draw the appropriate uh, appropriate conclusions. So you can pick out the ones which suit you. I, I'm knowing 
the answer to this, which had previously worked out then. Uh, I know that these are the relevant ones here, so I've just I've just done these. But you will probably have to uh, do a, a larger selection. Uh, and the other thing to bear in mind, of course, is that um, because it's a less than or equal to, then of course uh, this is giving you your your you know the, the probability in your tail. The this is this is the the, the opposite. So you have to subtract this from one in order to give you the the, the size of the tail that you're interested in. <laughs> but uh, needless to say, that's going to give us probability that uh, x is less than two is 0 0.027 three and that it's less than 10 um uh, is going to be a oh, great uh, less than 10 it's going to be 0.9827 so um what but what we're interested in of course is the is one minus that that number so um so our lower critical region therefore is less than or equal to one, which with the probability of 0 0.0273, and the upper is greater than or equal to 10 with probability of 0 0.0173, which of course is the one minus that. Um, so um, so those are our critical regions, um, and the actual significance level is the sum of these two, so sort of total size of your, of your two tails added together. Uh, which is 4.46%. So that would be the actual significance level of your test. <clears throat> then he goes on to say, some changes were made to the process. Two out of 25 bulbs were found to be faulty. Is there evidence of 5% that changes have been have made a difference to the defect proportion? So, um, well, um, if, um, if, if we've got uh, two... Then uh, two is actually falling into our is is not falling into our uh, to our critical region. So therefore, we're just going to accept the the null hypothesis. Okay, <clears throat> so we've got everything teed up for that test, and then we actually took the observation that two out of twenty five. Kind of, we knew straight away that it wasn't going to be in the critical region. So uh, let's just move on to this example. Yeah which is the owner of a small restaurant decides to change the menu. Trade magazine claims that 40% of diners choose organic foods when eating away from home. On a randomly chosen day, there are 20 diners eating in a restaurant, assuming a claim made by the... Well, right, okay, we haven't said yet how many uh, are organic uh, eaters. Um, assuming the claim to be made by, uh, by the trade magazine to be correct, suggest a suitable model to describe the number of diners X who choose organic and, um, and then to calculate this probability. So, uh, yeah, we're looking at binomial. Um, it's 40%, you see this quite a, a lot, where really it's 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 kind of this 0.4 in disguise. So just watch out for that. Um, but it, obviously 20 in the in the group, in the, in the trial size. Um, so that's your distribution, and if we want to calculate the probability that, that that the number in you know any group of twenty falls between five and fifteen exclusively, then we have to convert it to this, um, basically because then we are calculated does cumulative binomial um, less than or equal to. So convert it to that gives us those numbers. Uh, which gives us this answer, 0.873. So that would be the answer to that part. Then the owner decides to survey her customers before finalising the new menu. She surveys 20 customers and finds four who prefer eating organic. So test the 5% level of significance. Well, this is this just this uh, uh, test we're going to do. Whether or not there is reason to believe that the proportion of diners in her restaurant who prefer to eat organic is higher than the trade magazine's claim. This question is is a bit it's fairly typical because this is this is just about binomial, and then we actually go on to use that in a hypothesis test. So sometimes you see that um, sort of question. So you know if if you could always do the first part of the question, um, get some marks, and um, maybe come back to this later. Um, but it's not too difficult in actual fact. So. 
the null hypothesis is that um, we are um, that the proportion is 0.4. Um, whether there is reason to believe that the proportion of diners in her restaurant who prefer organic is higher. Right, higher. Than, so we're sort of trying to disprove this 0.4, aren't we? So that's why it's our null hypothesis. And our alternative is that is a greater than, because we're trying to prove that it's higher. We want a tail test at 5%. We've got a test statistic of four. Um, I changed these numbers, by the way, because the, the original question changes the parameters and, and makes it a bit long-winded. So um, I've simplified it. So the test statistic is four. Now, so four is down 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 here, which, uh, I mean, 0.4 out of 20, that would give us a sort of expected value of eight, wouldn't, wouldn't it? So, so this is like the middle all. Um, so, so what's the probability we're saying of, of of observing four or fewer? That's what we're interested in. Four or fewer. What's the probability of actually getting it? And and that's our critical re, you know, uh, well, our critical region is lower than that. But what's the probability of getting four or lower? Well, the probability of getting four or lower is actually 0 0.0510. So um Um, now, um, we basically, um, we're testing at the 5% level. So it's a one tail test. So this is it's just not quite in the critical region, is it? The critical region would be 0 0.05. Uh, so we're not quite in it. So uh, marginally, we're just going to accept H0. Um, and therefore, there's no reason to take P as not equal to 40%. Okay, so that is that one. Well, let's have another look at this one. This one here, this is a, a finally, we'll, this, will, this will do us after this. I think a local government spokesman claims that at least three quarters of the residents, 75% of residents of town are in favour of plans to build a new bypass for the town. An opinion poll showed that 10 out of 16 were in favour. Tests at the 10% significance level whether the results of the opinion poll are consistent with this local government spokesman's claim. Right, OK. So I think we're at 10 out of 16 with three quarters of the residents. Um, yeah, you might have to think about that a little bit, but, you know, it, it's going to be... That would be by if that was true, 0.75. This would be um binomial with a an n of 16 and a p of 0.75. And our hypothesis are the results consistent with the spokesman's claim? Okay, so that's what we're testing whether or not p is 0 0.75, or is it? Not 0.75, he just says, are they consistent? You can say whether they're greater or less than, just are they consistent? So, so the alternative hypothesis is that it's not 0.75. So this would give us a two-tail test at 10%. So we're, our tails would be 5% at either end. Now, what we'll do is we calculate it. We'll just see whether or not, uh, you know, how, how close it is. So, so what we're looking at is, uh, well, we've observed 10 out of 16. Um, and the probability of getting 10 or fewer, uh, remember t 10 is lower than, I'm going to look at is 0.75 of 16. So the kind of middle of this is 12. So we're in the, we're in, we're at the, the, the left hand end. So what we're interested in is what is the probability of getting a result um, uh, as low as 10. And so that probability of less than or equal to 10 is 0 0.1897. Um, so, you know, 10 is not going to be in the critical region, is it? This is quite a high percentage, uh, actually. So therefore, we accept um, that the poll is consistent with 0 0.75. Now, uh, just statistically, well, what, you know, what does that mean? There doesn't seem to be any other evidence. If there's been no other poll done, then actually, this this one poll is our, is probably our best uh, our, our best estimate of what the uh, what p actually is. 
Um, so we might be better going with, uh, you know, with, with uh, 10 out of 16, which would well be about, you know, about, be uh, about 60% or something like that. Um, you know, that's the sort of thing that we, we may be faced with in uh, with statistics. So um, anyway, that is uh, a few examples really illustrating binomial, illustrating um that uh, you know the your, your tails aren't necessarily going to uh, give you exact uh, significance level you know one of the sort of standard five percents or so on um and hopefully that is going to help you so um okay right well um uh, we're going to few got a few more things in the probability functions section to do so um uh coming on to some more some really interesting things uh next so uh hopefully that's been clear and useful and i'll see you next time